So we come in right here with our main distribution block, three-phase 480 in ground. From here, we go out to fuse holders and uh, motor starters. These are just regular motor starters. They're gonna turn on uh, three-phase motors. We got their hot water pumps, one and two, tempered water, one and two, and a shaker screen. And then these are heating coils for the wastewater CMF uh, ceramics and the RO, reverse osmosis heating coils for keeping the water warm. These are uh, variable frequency drives. They're like a motor with a volume knob, and then it'll get a reference. On the feed pumps, they're wanting to maintain a pressure, so as the filter is filtering and letting clean water out, it brings new water in and it maintains the pressure. And these two are wastewater pumps, so they're uh, pumping out to sewer. They're probably trying to maintain a flow rate. And these are the fuse holders for those devices. I got the, the three VFDs, the two uh, contacts, and then these two two-pole fuse holders, one's for my 120 volt transformer and one's for the air conditioner. We have mounted to the side of it. Oh, right here, okay. This steps down from 480 volts to 120 volts, which is like normal household wire. That's all the red wires. And then these guys drop down to 24 volt output, 24 volt DC, 24 to 28 volt. The red wire is coming in at 120, dropping it down to blue wire, which is going to be 24 volt. The majority of this is running on 24 volts. You can see right here, there's hardly any 120 volt reds. Most of it's all this uh, blue it's wires. All the blue wires. Yeah, 120 or 24 volt. Process logic controller or PLC. He's uh, taking all the inputs and outputs and doing the, running the software to keep everything happy. On the door, we got the e-stop, alarm horn, control power, and assorted switches. We're basically turn the power on, the system's an alarm, it'll give a red light. We also have a remote red light that goes in the maintenance office to let them know that it's an alarm. Start the system with a button, turn on the CMF or shut it down, turn on the reverse osmosis or shut it down, and an alarm horn if it's buzzing, then you want to turn off the horn so you can hear yourself think. <laughs> Here we've got a uh, level control floats. So basically these are going down to a pit or a tank that has dirty water in it and you can't really put a transducer on it to read that weight. So we've got what's called a standpipe where air just blows out the bottom of it. And uh, if there's water in there, it puts back pressure on the airline. The airline has to have greater pressure to get the bubbles out. And we can read that in inches water column. So it's blowing out a small amount, a square cubic foot an hour. We'll set it at one square cubic foot an hour. And then they've got the regulator here that brings it into the flow meters. Okay. And then they go out to the bubblers. And then these transducers are reading the pressure on the line. So like I said, if there's no water, the pipe just blowing air off the bottom, there's no pressure. And as it comes up, like five feet of water would be two and a half PSI. Every 28 inches is a pound. And uh, it would read that. And that's the pneumatics. That's pretty much it. Cool, so you're powering this up. Yep, we're getting ready to power it up. Do some Do testing. I've already went through the point to point check and checked for ground faults. So I'm ready to power it up. Start putting in the fuses, turning on different devices. I've got them all pulled out so we can power them up one at a time under control.